advantage. Not only do I think don't overprepare is unhelpful advice, I think it can even be potentially harmful to new DMs. It was only once I accepted that I thrive as a DM when I feel thoroughly prepared that I finally started doing game prep that actually worked for me. Two hours later. My D&D campaign crashed and burned because of Game Master Burnout. <laughs> Well, I've tried to hold my tongue when it comes to fellow YouTuber Ginny D. For a while, I just said, let the thirsty gamer simps enjoy their queen. I mean, nobody can deny that she does put hard work into her videos. They're professionally done, and she isn't afraid to use her um, physical assets to captivate the men who make up most of her audience. For those that don't know, Ginny was, and still is, a cosplayer who found out that there was a bonanza in the TTRPG world after D&D 5e came out. Using her cosplay fame, she's built an army of followers on YouTube and Twitter. And now she gives out some, let's just say, hilariously generic gaming advice. So silly it makes Denise Richards seem believable in her role as Christmas Jones. I played a nuclear psychiatrist in a James Bond movie. In real life, it's dangerous to turn your back on someone who's trying to kill you. DMs are improvising a lot of the time. D&D is a pretty complicated game. I mean, it requires textbooks to play. Note to self, combat does not have to be limited to a single chamber. And if my bad guys notice that the party is picking on a single target, they might move to defend. Now to be clear, I have no problem with anyone making their money. If she can ride her fan base of simps to the promised land, good for her. But the more you look into Ginny, she's not the sweetheart you might think she is. If you only watched her videos. Or listened to the fans who, quite frankly, probably drop their shorts around their ankles the minute she releases a video. She's actually, and by her own admission, kind of a disturbed person. Conflicted. Depressed. And at times, I would say... Pretty hateful. If Ginny had just stuck to giving gaming advice she has no business giving, well, that would be one thing. YouTube is kind of saturated with that right now. It's nobody's real surprise. She's kind of just a garden variety leftist. He's a huge proponent of safety tools like the X card in RPGs and isn't afraid to castigate anyone who doesn't fall in line. It's pretty clear why someone who identifies as perpetually depressed would champion these idiotic tools instead of wondering whether anyone in such a fragile state of mind has any real business at a gaming table to begin with. We've said it over and over again. The game table is not your group therapy session. You're creating fun and a little bit of art. Sometimes art is risque. You got to deal with it. Many of the people who insist on using these tools are egomaniacal, narcissistic creeps who get a vicarious thrill out of making people bend to their will. And of course, she makes naive comments about the purity of socialism, but she saves the worst of her venom for the dastardly GOP. <laughs> That's right. Our girl Ginny, like so many others, is outright deranged when it comes to Republicans. Me in my video. The Critical Role cast are good people. A few commenters. You know they're really mean to Republicans. Me. Did I effing stutter? This was always the plan. The right was not secretive about it. If you've supported Republicans with your vote, your voice, or your money, this is on you. Saying Republicans are shitty is not the same thing as saying trans people are mentally ill, or rape survivors are liars, or black people are evil. Not today to be in my mentions demanding that I view Republicans with generosity. Holy shit. How tone deaf. This is silly. I don't think Republicans are evil because they don't agree with me. I think they're evil because they want to take rights away from women, trans people, and non-white races. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to keep thinking Republicans are evil until they stop supporting evil policies. I know what Republicans are talking about, and it scares the shit out of me. So I'm going to vote, and it cancels out yours. Bye. While the lies that she makes about Republicans would make old Joe Goebbels beam with pride, she can also breathe a sigh of relief that they won't get her into trouble. Republicans are fair game for companies like Wizards of the Coast, Paizo, Evil Hat, and plenty of others, despite making up about half the population. They're also a protected target for YouTubers like Ginny. 
so too are Christians. That's right. Ginny is also a bit of a religious bigot, too. And as I always like to point out, 80% of black Americans identify as Christians. So it's interesting how that always gets forgotten by these people, isn't it? Despite being married to a very, very white man. Ginny also has no problem grabbing fruit that's hanging so low it would hit Peter Dinklage square in the nuts. Well, that's right. Like every basic bitch, <laughs> millennial leftist, whose mandated surname should probably be either Dunning or Kruger, she takes a 20 on her Twitter virtue signaling by hammering cis white males. Males probably a lot like her husband. <laughs> How women like her can throw her own husband, probably her own father, every other male relative she knows under the bus is pretty vile. I'm willing to bet they make up quite a majority of her subscribers and followers, too. The cowards at Wizards of the Coast also let her interview Kyle Brink after the whole OGL fiasco earlier this year. I'm sure they spotted an easy mark and, quite frankly, fellow racist in her. And while she did challenge him a little bit on that, she chose not to address his comment about white guys not leaving the hobby fast enough. Based on the tweets above and her utter silence on Brink's comments, it seems pretty clear that she's sympathetic to that message. Ginny is swimming in sponsorship money. By her own admission, she has 20 times the sponsorship demand that she has time for. She's becoming a professional shill. It seems like every other video she releases is now a dedicated sponsorship video or has one slapped right in the middle. And again, to her credit, she does put some effort into these spots. And as I said, if they're offering the money, then she should certainly take it. But there are so many other channels out there that have so much more experience at the gaming table. It makes you wonder why she's so blessed uh, when it comes to gaming companies throwing their money at her. Hmm. Everyone hates the person who is so blessed in life, but spends all of their time whining and complaining about how bad they've got it. While some of us patiently wait for an era of desperately needed stoicism, we have to listen to the likes of Ginny complain nonstop about how bad she's got it. One thing she always whines about is burnout. <laughs> I found more burnouts in her Twitter feed than I did my graduating class. And that was a lot. <laughs> The old man grabbed me and said, hey, smoke up, Johnny. I credit this costume with breaking me out of a long period of burnout. 70% of Game Masters have ended a campaign over burnout, myself included. I'm taking a social media break. I've been having a rough time lately, flirting with burnout. I spent my 20s grinding and now regularly break down in therapy, trying to convince myself that I'm allowed to rest or say no or do less, even when the alternative is soul-crushing burnout and deep depression. I started 2016 with major cosplay burnout. This thread is specifically about teaching, but I think it holds a really important lesson for us all about burnout and the choices we make. Burnout is really starting to get to me. I start testing plugins to limit myself from reading my own comments. I have lived in a state of burnout for like two years, lol. That's not what I want to do at all. I am burnt the F out and have been in various stages of burnout for years. I get frustrated easily lately. Burnout symptom? I don't know. I've experienced plenty of burnout and that does not seem to be enough to magically grant me time management skills. I work 80 hours a week and I'm in therapy because I'm deeply depressed and living in a state of burnout. Oh, I'm burnt out on everything. I live in burnout. Thank you, I'll check it out. I've been reading a lot about burnout lately. It's way too easy to never clock out. And that leads to burnout. We have to protect ourselves from burnout. How do you even get cosplay burnout? You literally get dressed up and have your picture taken. <laughs> or you walk around in costume while simps proverbially throw money at you. To hear this sort of carping and whining from a girl who's just a little over 30 years old and gets paid to play games and dress up in costumes, it's kind of infuriating. It shows a lack of perspective so often seen in her generation. Unfortunately, like all of us, life is going to deliver some truly heavy blows to Ginny. I can only hope that she then looks back on all of this with a certain sense of shame. She even complained about being burnt out after running a relatively short D&D &D campaign. Now, I've been running our current campaign since the mid-1990s, 
it's almost as old as Ginny is. <laughs> While I schedule infrequent breaks where I go to the other side of the screen, I have never been close to burnout. Every time I sit down, I realize how blessed I am to play a game with my family and my best friends, and that these times are not going to last forever, and that when they do pass, we're going to look back on them with so much fondness. Our video on how to deal with DM burnout is full of everything from obvious to terrible advice. For example, she says that you should take a few months off from playing. Be willing to cancel if you're not feeling up for a session. Take an extended break of a few weeks or even a few months to give yourself space to recharge. Nothing will cause your game group to dissolve faster than this, as the players will quickly find other things to do on game night. It's awful advice. The type you'd expect from a cosplayer turned gamer who's now made gaming a lucrative hustle. A lot of this also has to do with the fact that D&D 5e, when combined with the critical role playstyle in vogue, is almost set up to fail. All of these critters believe that every game needs to be like their favorite quasi-scripted show, it is, and that their DM needs to be a professional voice actor. When people realize that the average in-person table is not like this, everyone walks away feeling empty and disappointed. The most hilarious thing I found out about is what she thinks of her simping fan base. <laughs> this girl loves to brag about how much she gets hit on. She chastises her fans about boundaries, respect, keeping it real. But to say Ginny sends mixed messages would be the understatement of the century. <laughs> She's used simps to build her brand and make some pretty good money on YouTube, but she doesn't want to take accountability for the fact that when you put your piece of pie out in the sun, it's going to draw a few flies. Are you a cleric? Because you're looking radiant. What's your AC? Because I want to roll to hit that. I must be a paladin, because you're making me want to lay on hands. I see charisma wasn't your dump stat. Are you a necromancer? Because you're sure making my bone rise. I must have rolled a natural one on my wisdom save, because I'm enthralled. Are you a mind flayer? Because I can't get you out of my head. Why don't you come back to my place and I'll show you my immovable rod. You must be a monk, because I feel like I've been hit by a stunning strike. My favorite terrain is your underdark. You're a barbarian, I'm a barbarian. Tonight let's get reckless. On a scale of 1 to 10, you're a natural 20. Hey girl, are you a celestial? Because I feel like I've been visited by an angel. What level of spellcaster are you? Because my counterspell isn't enough to defeat your charm person. Call me an Asamar, because I've fallen for you. In the end, I gotta say, the more I learned about Ginny, in her own words, the more reprehensible I found her. Even with half a million subscribers and sponsorship money coming out of her shitty prosthetic ears, she still whines about how tough she has it. All while giving the most basic advice anyone who's played the game for six months would grasp. She uses terms like action economy to make her sound smart. At the end of the day, Ginny's just an up-jumped titty streamer who should thank the gods that her D&D simps are willing to settle for a fake smile, a pair of bees, and a tired die job. So that's going to do it for today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Am I uh, all wrong on Ginny or uh, did I get it right? <laughs> I thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. It really does help. You could even subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this type of content, as well as uh, much more. Um, we'd love to have you in our corner. Uh, you can also financially support the channel by becoming a member. Uh, you'll get exclusive early access to videos such as this, as well as being eligible for some giveaways and some uh, exclusive video content as well. Uh, never expected, but uh, always appreciated. I thank every one of you members. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our weekly live stream called The Lair. Me and a couple of my friends have a great time talking about gaming and other related topics. We would love to see you there. We have a very lively uh, chat, and uh, we like to interact with them, and uh, everybody has a pretty good time, I think. Okay, so that's going to be all for today. I hope you guys have a great, great rest of your day. And until we see each other again, goodbye. What qualifies you to be a U.S. Senator? You have 60 seconds. Hi. Good night, everybody. In the year 2525.
If all you video gamers are still alive, hi, it's your boy Double D. That's right, I'm singing again. But this time, I am singing the praises of Powered Up Paradise and their Game Boy phone cases. That's right, this is actually a protective case for your phone, but it doubles as a Game Boy preloaded with many of your favorite vintage video games. Ingenious, huh? Guys, let's face it, mobile games are the shits. The better the graphics, it seems, the worse the game. So go back in time, relive your childhood in a practical way. Or if you're a youngin', you can discover the addiction of the golden age of video games. Use the promo code DIVERSITY5 to get 5% off.